let's set up and evaluate our first actual polar integration problem. So we're going to take a shape that turns out will work rather nicely with polar coordinates, just so you can kind of see the names of the pieces and the types of pieces we have to fill in. And we can increase the difficulty with practice over time. So we're going to look at a cylinder with a radius of 3 and the height of the cylinder will be equal to 8. And I want you to not just think of it as a geometry shape, a cylinder, I want you to think of it as something that is in the XYZ plane and it has um, coordinates on uh, points on the cylinder and there might be equations involved. So remember when we're setting up a double integral, we have um, a couple of things to keep in mind. The region of integration is really the top view. As I've been calling it, it's, it's the foundation we're building our structure on. So the top view of this should just be a circle of radius 3. Okay? So this cylinder sits um, in the third dimension, but on top of this circle foundation. The top of the cylinder is 8 units over the paper. So I'll come up. 8 units above that circle is the top. So, the circle itself has an xy equation, but we're going to look at its polar equation. Its polar equation is r equals 3. And in order to trace all the way around the circle once, we are going to look at the theta values as varying from 0 to 2 pi. That will take us all the way around the circle one time. And the foundation lies entirely inside of the circle of radius 3, starting from radius of 0. So another analogy I'll make when, when talking about polar coordinates and these boundaries is I want you to think about a sprinkler system to water the yard. And here's zero, and there's three units out, and there's three units out, and there's three units out, and there's three units out. We go all the way around watering our yard in a perfect circle, three units out from the origin or the pole. And that's not a very good picture when I'm done, but we're looking at everything inside that circle is our XY plane. We'll figure out the height in just a moment. Now, we also have a third dimension. The Z equals aspect of this problem. Well, the top of this cylinder is just a horizontal plane of height 8. That is the plane z equals 8. And we are interested in not the entire plane, but the part of the, the region between the circle, radius 3, and the plane. That is where a cylinder resides. So, we've just learned that when we convert, there are no x and y values, so it stays 8. But dA can be rewritten as r multiplied by dr d theta, previous video. Our theta values, our constants at the end, are going to go from, see it here, from 0 to 2 pi. And our r values are going to go vary from 0 to 3. These are the boundaries that will take care of 
this entire circle inside the region from zero to three of radius all the way around. And then this is the third dimension from zero to eight. Now, let's evaluate it. First antiderivative of eight r is four multiplied by r squared. r goes from zero to three. Three squared is nine. Nine times four is 36. Zero times anything is zero. If you want to see a little bit extra, that'd be 36 minus zero, which is just 36. And then what is that next integral? That's right. 36 theta, zero times two into two pi. This is going to end up being 72 pi minus zero. 72 pi units cubed. Now, the rule of thumb in my classroom is if I don't provide you units, you don't have to provide me units at the end. Oh, I apologize, this is way down the page. But you may write units cubed if you want to. Now, the geometry teacher would probably be disappointed if you didn't verify it. Pi times the radius squared multiplied by height. Pi times 3 squared multiplied by 8 will indeed be 72 pi. And it checks out. Thank goodness the calculus works. I'd hate to have to do this video again. Later.